and find that the very thing spoken on by the prophets and by Jesus himself are literally happening before our eyes. All that the Bible says concerning the condition of man in these days, at this time, all that it says concerning the condition of man, it says concerning the condition of Israel and the world are here. And we've been teaching prophecy for quite some time. I love teaching on that subject. And uh, these are times where it is amazing where in teaching this, now we are seeing the very things that we've been sharing on for years are coming to pass before our eyes. We are that generation right now. Um, We've seen just as a quick snapshot, for example, from God returning the Jews to Israel, to the restoring of Jerusalem, to God preparing the Temple Mount, the place where uh, Christ will return there on the Mount of Olives. We find also the position of the world, of Russia, Iran, Syria, Turkey, Europe, China, When we look at how God is positioned for the first time in world history, the alignment of all of these nations. We also see the the movement in world religions and globalization. We see the blueprint of a one world system, advanced technology in place. Um, There's so much to share and I I will give you updates each week as I see stuff. There's there's so much stuff to share, but uh, there's only so much I can do on a Sunday morning. So but um, I will continue to share and update you on stuff and also on our calls as well at 1145. As we step back for a moment and look at the world, it's important that we look at the world also through the lens of Scripture. Right now the media is, is, is showing us the world you know, in, as is right now. But it's so important, listen right now, that we look at the world through the lens of Scripture critical right now. Um, And it's so important that uh, we understand what is going on, what is happening, and what we are to do. Critical. In the midst of everything that is in place, um, we have some very powerful examples in the Bible of some great men and incredible families of the scripture who lived during such times. They lived during times of, of approaching judgment and of severe storms. Uh, Men and women who lived uh, and have tremendous testimonies in the scriptures. And I'd like to spend some time looking at a couple of them this morning from the book of Genesis. Um, And I'd like to look at specifically uh, one man, maybe two, who lived during such times and what they did and how God was with them through such days. Some questions that I have been asked um, very recently is, are we now seeing the judgments of the book of Revelation? Is what is happening the opening of the seals regarding God's judgment? And the answer is no. We're not in the, the seals part of the book of Revelation right now. Those things will happen during what is known as the tribulation period or the final seven year period is, is when those events happen. Um, That seven-year tribulation period is also known as the 70th week of Daniel, also the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, And after the one world leader comes on the scene, also known as the Antichrist comes on the scene, that's when those things, when that seven-year period uh, kicks off and it is during that time that those seals are open. So no, it is not that period of time right now. I do believe that when that happens, that the church will be out of here during that time. That's what is known as the rapture, that the Lord will come for his church and take the church out during that time. That's in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And so we definitely want to be ready right now um, in our walk with the Lord. People have asked, how many more events need to happen before the Lord returns? We're, we're pretty much in a position right now to, to seriously be ready uh, right now. Our world has changed overnight. Um, but where are we right now? And if you would turn with me for a moment to Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, and we are in the time period right now that leads up to those events happening during what is known as the tribulation period. And in Matthew chapter 24, verse 4, the disciples asked Jesus the question, Lord, when, when do all of these things happen? And this was his answer. Matthew 24, 4 says, And Jesus answered and said to them, 
Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, or I am the Savior, and deceive many. One of the signs of uh, the coming of the Lord, or what I would consider this time of what the Bible says is called the beginning of sorrows. This is where uh, we are, or God is in a sense, uh, letting us know what's happening. These are things that are drawing our attention. We see major things beginning to change in the world Uh, Jesus says this is the beginning of sorrows. This is the runway to this. That runway includes Israel being back in the land, the Jewish people, uh, Jerusalem, all of those things being in place. But here in in Matthew 24, 4, he says, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. It means that there will be a rise in all types of false religions right now. Um, And that we clearly see. In verse 6 it says, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. And then he says, See that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. We have, in a sense, gone from a, uh, a wilderness of religion. Uh, here we've seen the uh, bumper stickers of coexist and, and, and just a mishmash of all religions. Um, very confusing, very wilderness area. We've just gone through, in a sense, another wave of wars and rumors of wars right now. Things very intense between all of the nations uh, before this uh, virus has hit. Um, And then the next thing that he says, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. That speaks of internal stress and also national stress um, that is happening. And then he says that there will be famines, pestilences, which we're seeing right now, earthquakes in various places, All these are the beginning of sorrows. This is, in a sense, the runway. Like a storm that is approaching upon the ocean, we will see wave after wave. Some pauses and some calmness and then increases in the waves and their strength. And so much of what we are seeing right now is is this time, this beginning of sorrows. Um, We're seeing right now an intensity also of the rebellion of man. Even the, the stories of this virus speak of also the the rebellion of man, the sinful heart of man. I do believe that God is using this time to get our attention globally. This is a time where people are asking, what is going on? God is, is, is we're utilizing this time that we are to turn and to seek the Lord. I love that the president uh, last Sunday asked for a national day of prayer. And listen, I pray that we continue to pray. Um, We need God desperately in our world, in our nation, in New York State especially. We need God's help right now tremendously. And we need need to have revival. We need to see salvation um, and to pray for that. We as a people need God desperately in our world. Um, I believe that the things that we're facing right now go far beyond the scope of man and require the direct intervention of God. Jesus says specifically in Matthew 24, 22, and unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Meaning unless God intervenes, we would be in great, great trouble, but he will intervene. And with that said, I want to share some encouraging things from the scriptures, from examples of some men who lived during such times and what they did and how God worked in their lives. If you'll turn with me to the book of Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. And in Genesis chapter 5 is a genealogy. You're saying, Pastor, we're going to learn a family tree today? And the answer is yes, genealogy. A genealogy is a a, a tree of someone's uh, lineage. And in this lineage, there's some very interesting uh, people that we need to know about right now. In Genesis chapter 5, we actually have the family tree of Noah. of Noah, And the family tree has a great encrypted message for us that we need to know today. So if you look with me for a moment, um, if you want to underline these in uh, Genesis chapter 5 verse 3, the first one we see is, is Adam. Adam is the first man. In verse 4, we see the name Seth. Seth is the next uh, son that is there. In verse 6, 
we find there Seth lived 105 years and begot Enosh. Enosh is the next one. And then we have in verse 9, uh, Canaan, who is there. The next son after that is Mahalalel in verse 12. Mahalalel in verse 12. Uh, in verse 15, the next uh, son that is there is Jared. In verse 18 is someone that we're actually going to focus on today. His name is Enoch. And then in verse 21, we have Methuselah. In verse 28, we have Lamech. And there in verse 29, we have Noah. Um, and I love what it says about Noah. This one will comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord. And we find here, as we'll continue to read on also in uh, Genesis chapter 6, uh, verse 9 about Noah. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. Um, and we also find that Noah, in verse uh, 8, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Why am I telling you about this genealogy? As you've highlighted all of these names, I'm going to tell you what all of the names mean. And there's a message in the names that we need to know. The first one, Adam, means man. The first man that God created, man. The name Seth, the second son, means that he is replaced. It means that it has the idea that man fell and in Seth now there is a promise. That man has fallen from his state, but now there is a promise. That is Seth. Enosh means that in man's fall, he was subject to death. He is mortal. The word Canaan, the next son, means sorrow. That there was great sadness over the fall, over the mortality. And then it says in Mahalalel, the next son means from the blessed God. It means that God, in a sense, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Mahalalel, from the blessed God. The next son is Jared. Jared, interesting, one shall come down, as Jesus came down from heaven to earth. Enoch means was dedicated or sacrificed. Is Enoch dedicated, that he was dedicated Methuselah means that he shall send before judgment. means that the son of promise will be sent before the judgment of God. Lamech means that he will be a conqueror of that which corrupted man. And Noah means he will bring great comfort and rest. And here we have in the genealogy this incredible story of, man, of really the whole story of man of man's problem and God's solution. That sin is our problem, death is our curse, and Christ is the cure. Let's look here in Genesis chapter 5, verse 21, as we pick up here on the title of our message, and it is entitled, Walking with God. Verse 21 says, Enoch lived 65 years. He was a senior citizen. 65 years. They lived a lot longer back then. And he begot Methuselah. And after he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God for 300 years. He had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch is a very, very important person for us to know right now. A uh, key person in the scriptures, as we'll see. He lives prior to the judgment of God which will come during the time of Noah. Many believe that he is an Old Testament type of the church because he is taken out before the judgment. Where Noah represents the nation of Israel that goes through the judgment, Enoch represents the church that goes out before the judgment. We find here that Enoch lives 65 years, notice this, begot Methuselah, and after he begot Methuselah, after he had Methuselah, Methuselah will be the oldest man in Scripture. He lives 969 years. After he has Methuselah at 65 years old, we find there that now he begins to walk with God. I want, I want to stop there for a moment. Enoch lived 65 years. For the first 65 years of his life, he walked without God. That's right. Enoch represents many today, the person who is walking without God. 
just going about life in the ways of the world. And apparently something happens at the birth of his son Methuselah. It says after Methuselah is born that Enoch now is walking with God. Notice that. Enoch walked with God then for the next 300 years. He had sons and daughters. And all of the years of Enoch were 365 years. So what was going on that perhaps changed the life and walk of Enoch? And perhaps, you know, maybe today, you right now are, have been living your life in the world, working hard, you know, building in this world, and your hope and your trust has not been in God. And now, listen, your life right now is, is changed. The future is changed. Whatever plans and things that you have, right now these are times where, where people are, are trying to figure things out. And this was the life of Enoch. Enoch was, was living his life. There was a lot of things going on in the world during that time. And he also was greatly concerned. Well, one of the things we know about Enoch is the days of Enoch were growing intensely evil. Intensely evil. Men were doing what was right in their own eyes. The Bible tells us that they were carrying on as life as usual within the world. That men were living after themselves and after sin and after pleasure, after the things of the world. And what is interesting is when he has this son Methuselah, there are two major things that happen here. Methuselah means this. He will be the last generation before judgment. He names his son that when this son lives his life and it comes to the end of his life, the judgment of God is coming upon the world. That's the, 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 it's a powerful reminder as he sees his sons because if, if, you know, God forbid he sees something happen to his son, he knows the end is here. And so can you imagine having a son like that? That, that, that? that when this son's life is over, the judgment of God is coming. The second thing I find interesting is Methuselah is the oldest man in the Bible. He lives 969 years. That's a long time. Methuselah represents God's grace on a God-rejecting world before judgment. Can you imagine that? This son, that God says, hey, this son that comes, when his time is up, the judgment is coming. And God gives him the longest life out of any man in all of Scripture. He is the representation of God's grace, of God not wanting to bring judgment, but God doing all that he can to reach. And the Bible tells us that Noah is a preacher of righteousness during that time, building the ark. Enoch, we find, comes from a godly lineage. Is it possible, as Enoch looked at the condition of the world and saw how lost it was, it describes, Jesus says that the days we're living in will be like the days of Noah and the days of Lot. Enoch is living at that time. He knows the judgment of God is approaching during that time. Is it possible, as Enoch looked at the condition of the world, that God spoke to Enoch and warned him about the world and told him to name his son Methuselah. And this prompted his walk. He was a changed man. The Bible tells us this, that there is a generation when their time is up. I, I, I'm, you know, as I've been looking at all of the reports of what's going on in Italy and in New York and throughout the world, we have to be real. This is a time where there's a lot of lives in the balances. There's a lot of lives right now going into eternity by the thousands. These are, these are not ordinary days. You know, the, you know, we're, my hope, of course, is that we rebound out of this, but it's going to be a changed world, an impacted world. There is a, genera there is a time, listen to me, when the generation, the time of that generation is up. If you will turn for me for a moment to Matthew 24, 34, Jesus says concerning his return and the nation of Israel. And this is important for you to understand. In Matthew 24, 34, Jesus says, and I, I would encourage you right now, these are days to be reading Matthew 24 and 25, most importantly, um, and also Ezekiel uh, 36, 37, and 38. But Jesus says to his disciples and to us, assuredly I say to you, this generation, speaking of the generation now, 
that sees the rebirth of Israel, that sees the signs of the times that we are watching right now. This generation, he says, will by no means pass away till all things take place. Many people ask this question. Are we the generation? Do you know that the Jewish people on templeinstitute.org have, have released a video there of the temple? And you know what it says? The, the, when you get to the end of the video, it's a short video, you can go on YouTube and look at it. They, at the end of that, the Jews themselves, quote, they don't realize they're quoting Jesus, but they say these words, this is the generation. Watch the video. I will, I'll, maybe I'll show it to you. I won't have time to show it to you today. We've showed it a number of times at the church. They say, this is the generation, and they show the temple being rebuilt. Many people ask, is this the generation? Well, Israel is only 70 years old right now, just over 70. And in just 70 years, God has brought the people back after 2,000 years. In 70 years, Israel was just ranked the eighth most powerful and prosperous nation in the entire world. They're smaller than the state of New Jersey. We find right now that concerning Israel, everything is in place. And listen, things are changing overnight in our world. I know that many pastors have tried to come up with all of the types of interpretations. Did God really mean generation here? Is it this generation? Is it the next generation? What's the interpretation of the generation? And I stick to what's plainly written. And based on the testimony of Methuselah, who's the man who lives the longest time in that generation, God will take as much time as possible to see more saved. What that timetable is, Jesus says, no one knows the day or the hour, but when you see these things happening, know that that time is approaching soon. So, so what we learn from this, very simply, is be ready and be about the Lord's business. Please. Be ready and be about the Lord's business in your life. These are not days to panic. These are days to pray. These are not days to have fear. These are days to have faith. These are days to be anchored in the Lord and to serve God and to make God your agenda and your priority in your life. Lord, how will you use my life today right where I am? What people can I encourage? Listen, this, this life is a short life. I know we have dreams and plans and all this stuff. And, and listen, God knows he holds our future. We want him to direct our steps. And, and the best thing that we can do with our lives right now is to say, Lord, every day, here's my life. God, use me for your purposes. The Bible says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, for his purposes. What better plan and purpose than for your life to be in the hands of God in an adverse world and God using your life for his honor and for his glory? Look at verse, turn with me, Genesis 5.24, the key verse of today. Underline this, highlight this. And Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. I'm going to read that again. Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. What an incredible testimony regarding the life of Enoch. Pastor, do you mean that he was living before the judgment? He was a man who was lost in the world, came to faith, got into a relationship with God, saw all the things that were going on, committed his heart and life to the Lord, was walking with God, and that God literally took him before the judgment? That is precisely what the Bible says. Enoch is an Old Testament foreshadowing of God coming for believers who are walking with God prior to judgment. In Revelation chapter 3, Jesus tells the church of Philadelphia, and the church, and listen, I don't want you to think because you go to church per se, that hey, that you, that you go to whatever X, Y, and Z church, or even this church, that, that, that you know, I go to Chapel Falls Christian Fellowship, so I'm good. Listen, your, your relationship with Christ is individual. We collectively make the church. And God is not interested in a say per se of, of what building and what denomination. Or God is interested in, and does, does he have hold of your heart? Is he on the throne of your heart? Are you walking faithfully and in love with the Lord and with God's people? Are, are you really a disciple? Are you really uh, a person who has committed your heart to the Lord? And in Revelation chapter 3, he speaks to the church of Philadelphia. It's the church of brotherly love. 
They are a faithful church. In Revelation 3.8, God says to this specific church, I know your works. I know what you're doing. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it, for you have a little strength. Yet, in other words, they, not that they're weak, but in an adverse, dark world, the church at that time was of little strength. People were not. The Bible says, Jesus says in the last days, that lawlessness will abound, and the love of many will grow cold. This church have little strength. Notice what they've done. They have kept my word and have not denied my name. They've been all about my business. Look at verse 10, Revelation 3.10. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole earth to test those who dwell on the earth. Notice that. Speaking here of the rapture, of, God, of, of the Lord taking his church, keeping them from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world. In Hebrews 11.5, it says also concerning Enoch, by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. When people wonder, what does it mean that God took him? Hebrews 11.5 tells us, by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony, listen, that he pleased God. May that be our story in these days and this time. What is it that God wants us to learn from the life of Enoch during such times? He had a walk that pleased God. And if there's anything I can communicate to you today in these days and these times that we're living, please, as, as your friend, as your pastor, have a walk that pleases God. There's only good things that are going to come out of it. it. It will be good for you. It will be good for your family. It will be good for all those. Have a walk that pleases God. Don't be religious. Have a relationship with God. You know, open your heart. Let him in. Let him wash and cleanse your life. Receive the promises of God for your life. Let the Holy Spirit work in and through your life and change you from the inside out. And have a walk that pleases God. You know, the most, you know, I, in, in my own relationship with God, it's not a religion. It's not something that I walk into a church and do. When, when the Lord comes into your life and forgives your sins and you understand how much he loves you and the work of God's spirit comes in, you are changed from the inside out. You love God and that's the vertical part of the cross. And because you love God, you want to walk with the Lord because he's good to you. He's with you. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. He's, he's taken care of your eternity, your life now and your life to come. The vertical part of the, the horizontal part of the cross is we use that love to love people with the love of God. The two greatest commands of God are to love the Lord with all your heart, your soul, your strength, and then to love your fellow man. That's the cross. It's the vertical and the horizontal. Upon these two commandments hang all the law of God. And we find here the life of Enoch. Before things really got off, off the hook, we find here that Enoch walked and had a walk that pleased God. It means he walked in a love relationship with God. And like Enoch, listen, if you've spent the first part of your life pleasing the world, walking in the ways of the world, now is the time to walk with God. Enoch made that decision, you know what, that my worldly days are over. He didn't see a future in the world. He saw the judgment of the world coming. And he said, you know what? I'm getting off that train and I'm going to walk with the Lord. And, and listen, he walked right into heaven with the Lord. What, what an incredible testimony. These are days where if you had hopes and dreams in the world, one, listen to me, one virus has shut the entire world down. And listen, I, I've been in my life all about hopes and dreams and education and all of these things but listen to me one virus one virus that's all it is one germ has changed the 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 destination right now of our world the destination of thousands of lives put your hope in christ put your hope in christ because he's incorruptible because he has a future and a hope and those who put their trust in the Lord, listen to me, will not be disappointed. I was not disappointed the day I received Christ into my life. God took me from a, 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 um, an exhausted, angry, 
lost teenager to giving me a future and a hope, to giving me an incredible family, an amazing wife, incredible sons, us going through the journey together. We've been through a lot of mountaintops and valleys and that God has been with us every single step of the way. And now that we are right now where we are in the world, I thank God right now, you know. And listen, all of us need to be in that relationship with Christ in our lives for your sake, for your family, for your future. There's no greater place to be. And this means right now to turn to the Lord, to pray, to walk with God, to surrender to God, and let Him use your life for His purposes. You know, if you want to learn today, if you want stuff to read this week, I would encourage you to read the letter to the Philippians and then read the letter to the Ephesians. We'll be finished with Ephesians eventually, so we're already in chapter 5 going to chapter 6, so we're getting there. But one thing for sure is the world needs the Lord. And the Lord came to seek and save that which was lost. Paul would say these words. I'm I'm getting to the end of the message. But Paul would say these words in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13. How can I encourage you today? Paul the Apostle writes, Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Ephesians 6.18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. 1 Timothy 4.16 says, Paul writing to a young person, to Timothy and all people, take heed to yourself. It means, you know what? You know, give yourself a checkup in a sense. Take heed to yourself. How are you doing spiritually? Take heed to yourself and to the word of God, continue in them, for in doing so you will save both yourself and those who hear you. In Matthew 5.16, Jesus says, Let your light so shine before people that they may see your life and glorify your Father who is in heaven, that your life will point other lives to Christ. Enoch's life, he had this testimony that he walked with God and that he pleased God. Everybody who saw this guy said, hey, this guy walks with the Lord. And they saw God do incredible things in his life. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. He's going to direct us through these dark times right now. Isaiah 26, 3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For in Yah the Lord is everlasting strength. Beautiful scripture, Isaiah 26, 3. And John 16, 33, Jesus says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But Jesus says, But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. What better kingdom to be a part of? What better team to play for? What better salvation to have than Christ? And you know what? It's free. It is free. Salvation is by the grace of God. As I close, as I close, hang in there, church. Hang in there, people. Please hang in there. Stay tight. This is a time where even though we have social separation, you know, because everybody's afraid of catching something, that we need to be more connected than others. Stay tight with each other, church. Encourage one another. Encourage one another. We are not alone. A lot of people are going to go through discouragement and depression. Um, Be sure, please, to check on one another. Encourage one another. Pray with and for one another. Be in the Word. Be connected to loved ones and families in the faith. Be a light to those without hope. We are watching right now a world agenda. But behind the scenes, please know that God is working his agenda contrary to all of the evil. As you see the media and all this stuff with all of this news, know that behind the scenes, that's why I said you have to look at this world through the lens of scripture. As the world and as the the evil of this world is moving, we are looking through the lens of scripture to see what God is doing contrary to to what the, the direction of this world is going. God is at work. Be for him. Be for him and be walking with him. I know there are many questions right now. And I know from speaking to people, and perhaps you have this question right now, the what if questions. 
you know, what if, what if, concerning work, concerning health, concerning your future, what if, what if, and I will leave you with this, please take things one day at a time. God hasn't called us to worry. He's called us to pray. God has called us to trust Him. And He also tells us that today's trouble is sufficient for the day. Listen to me. Take, one, take everything one day at a time. We never saw ourselves being in this position that we are right now. But as quickly as we are in, God can quickly take us out as well. So just take things one day at a time. Our world right now has never been where we are right now. This is the first time we are in this position. We are in uncharted waters right now, but we have the greatest God and Savior who will see us through these times. And please continue to pray for our world leaders, our president, our government, our first responders, doctors, nurses, those who are struggling right now. Please be praying right now for our world and pray for your family, encourage your family. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Jesus says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, uh, or Paul the Apostle says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Don't ever think that right now while I'm home and there's not much I can do, there's plenty that you can do, just as we're home right now in a sense. We're, we're limited, but right now God is using us in mighty ways. Value the family time. If you said, oh, I need time with my family, perhaps you have that now. So invest your time in your family. Be praying for them. Be encouraging them. Um, meet with your family, especially. Have family meetings. Ask everyone how they're doing. Because I know it's an easy time for kids to get checked out in the digital world. And these are times to keep everyone focused and centered and communicating and encouraging. And listen, we're going to get through. We will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of his testimony. We have promises and we have a great God who will get us through this time. And so please do not despair. Let's pray as we close. Father, we come before you. We thank you again for your word. And we thank you for the word of God, Lord, for the life of Enoch. And Lord, as we wrap up today, we take with us, Lord, that we might be a people, Lord, that have a walk that pleases you. We thank you for the testimony of Enoch. For the first part of his life, he walked without you. But as he became aware, I believe, of the world and the word of God, something changed in his life. And he became a man who walked. And the word of God tells us that you were pleased with his walk. And Lord, that you had a future that we can only imagine for him. So God, we, we just pray for all of us here. Perhaps there's those listening today who have not been walking with the Lord and you're seeing everything that's going on in the world and your jobs, your work, everything that is happening. Put your, your, your faith, your trust, your future in Christ's hands. Those are the best hands to be in. And before I close, I just want to lead us in a prayer. If you need to rededicate your life to God right now or you want to receive Jesus in your life, would you please pray with me right now? This is the most important prayer we could ever pray. And you can repeat after me. Father, I come before you. I thank you for your salvation. I thank you that you stepped out of heaven and came to earth. That Jesus died on the cross for my sins. The very thing that keeps me from your presence and keeps me from heaven. Jesus died and paid the price for me. I thank you, Lord, that you love me, that you have a future and a hope for me. I pray that you'll wash and cleanse all my sins, Lord, that I would be a man, Lord, that I'll be a woman that will follow in the footsteps of Enoch, Lord, to walk with you through this time, to have a walk that is pleasing you. And God, that you will help me by and through the power of your Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit will comfort me and encourage me and help me through these days. God, I trust you and I look to you and I ask you to fill me with your spirit and that goodness and mercy would follow me all the days of my life 
And Lord, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, would you let us know that on Facebook? We've had people say, hey, pastor, I prayed that prayer today. Uh, Please let us know that so we can pray for you and even send you stuff um, as well to encourage your walk with the Lord. Um, Before we close, just a couple of other important things. Uh, Please take advantage of our online services and updates. Please review our website. Um, Also, as far as uh, if you're able to, we appreciate uh, tithes and offerings. Those are available. You can do that online um, right through our website. We encourage uh, that support. And if you're unable to, we certainly appreciate, most importantly, your prayers for our ministry through this time. We're here, and we're here for the long haul with you. Um, Also today at 1145, we'll have our church forum. You can call into that. Uh, We'll see you in about a half hour. And then tonight at 6 p.m. is our leadership meeting um, as well. The Lord bless you and keep you, watch over you. Um, If you have any needs, please feel free to contact the church um, as well. We love you guys so much. God bless you, your families, and we will see you soon.